Uh, coming to the stage right now is a really great up and coming comic. Very, very funny. Uh, please give it up for Brian Moody, everybody. <laughs> Just so you know, there's free drinks at the bar right now because nobody's watching it. <laughs> Everybody just leaves. Uh, I live in Denton and I uh, work here, so I drive a lot. Uh, I was driving the other day and uh, got cut off by a guy. So, uh, like, I'm pretty chill though. It's just like, oh man, it's not cool. But I saw he had a honk if you heart Jesus bumper sticker. So I honked because it's Blasphemy not to, and uh, he gave me this. <laughs> Which I was like, man, that's not cool, because all I had to do was look at my bracelets and realize that Jay would not do that. <laughs> uh, so uh, I figured we were playing the sign language game, so I gave him this. <laughs> that really got his attention, he needed this thing. Uh, so I was like, got this guy where I want him, so I had to double down. <laughs> and that, and that really pissed him off, he like swerved in the next lane and slowed down, it was like right here in my passenger window, it was like yelling at me, and like I wanted to have this conversation with him, but my truck is the opposite of fully loaded and it's really hard to reach across and do this thing. <laughs> uh, so I had to keep with the sign language, so I went with the only sign language I knew and I did this. I don't know if you know what that means. Uh, if you were an eighth grade sign choir at First Baptist Church of Mansfield, you would. That means I love Jesus. And, uh, that's how I kept myself from getting killed by a tea party after jizzing on a Silverado and getting a double cocky face. Uh, while we're talking about uh, politics, uh, you know, a week from Tuesday, we have a very important uh, decision to make. Uh, I know I'm in Texas and I lean left, so this might not land with everyone, but uh, bear with me. Uh, I'm going to talk about politics for a little bit, and I just want to say that the limited monarchy of 17th, 17th century England was horse shit and uh, led directly to the oppressive mid to late 1800s in Victorian era Great Britain. And uh, if anybody wants to fight me in the parking lot about it, I totally will. Uh, I'm serious about this shit. taboo topics, I'm going to go to the next one and read you my favorite Bible verse. Uh. <laughs> this is Deuteronomy 25.11 from the NIV, the New International Version. Uh, if two men are fighting and the wife of one of them comes to rescue her husband from his assailant, and she reaches out and seizes him by his private parts, you shall chop off her hands and show her no mercy. What? Exactly! Whoever said mystery person, there you go, yeah, yeah, exactly. What the hell? All right, we need some clarification, so uh, I'm going to read the very next verse, and it says, Do not have two differing weights in your bag, one heavy, one light. What? It's literally, it's just like, oh, chop off her hands, next. to be like, you know, just in case this happens, we need to have a rule for this. So what happened was there's a whole bunch of, uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, Israelites in the desert wandering, and they're like, we need more laws, because those ten, ten Commandments are near enough. And one guy's, when they're coming up with the laws, one guy's like, okay, it's my turn. All right, go. Like, you remember when me and Yahushua Goldstein were fighting? <laughs> yeah. To the sun. Yeah. Like, but then this bitch Ruth rolled into the ring and grabbed my nuts. Yeah. I was messed up. Like, I don't want that ever to happen again. What are we going to do about it? I don't know, man. Just, just cut off one of her hands. No, fuck that, dude. We're going to chop off both her hands and show her no mercy. And, and now it's my turn to come up with a law, and I want to talk about weights. <laughs>
that's what a 47 year old Trump lawyer told me at the bar. Uh, and I don't like agreeing with such a terrible, terrible person, but he's right, that's not science. Uh, at the very best, it's absurd hyperbole. And at worst, it's just unbridled, filthy hate. Uh, I'm really glad I'm not homophobic or, or racist. Uh, I did realize the other day, though, that I'm a little bit racist, but only to the extent where if I walk into a quick trip and I see a 50-year-old white guy with a camo hat and a Carhartt jacket, my first thought is, I bet that guy's a homophobic racist. <laughs> uh, it's cool. I'm okay with that level of prejudice. I sleep well. In fact, I sleep like a baby. Uh, just really glad I don't wake up like a baby. Just, uh, HELP! I'M SCARED, HUNGRY, AND COVERED IN PISS AND SHIT! <laughs> Kid. Uh, me and my parents went on vacation when I was little, and we went to California. We we're on uh, we we're on Venice Beach, and we we're looking out at the ocean. Just me and my dad, and there's two lights out there. My dad goes, "Hey Brian, you see that light over there? That's Tokyo. You see that light over there? That's Hawaii." I was like, "Wow, how can we see those, Dad?" It's like, "Well, there's no land to block the light, so it just goes as far as it can." And I had this weird epiphany as an eight-year-old that, like, you know, the world's not so small, you know? It's like, like we're actually really close. And then I like, got to, like, geography class when I was 13 and found out about, like, the curvature of the Earth and realized my dad was just a liar. <laughs> uh, and I also realized that a flautist was not somebody that makes flautas. <laughs> that also was a lie. Uh, <laughs> One thing that carried over from youth is I still really like Kool-Aid, uh, but I think the reason I like Kool-Aid is because you know your preference based on color. Like, uh, if somebody comes up to me, hey Brian, you want some Kool-Aid? Yeah, what color? Oh, uh, red. Oh yeah, I'll take red. But don't you dare fucking me offer me blue, because that shit's worse than green. <laughs> and I hate green. Uh, also, I hate being told what to do. That's why I don't get along with Nike and their slogan, just do it. Um, the day... A shoe tells me what to do is the day my shirt gives me moral support. I'm just going to say that right now. You're doing a great job, Brian! Thanks, shirt. <laughs> He's always got my back. Yeah, that joke's totally ridiculous. Uh, I also hate going to the grocery store and seeing things that say they're homemade, because uh, if it was homemade, the cookies would be on my counter when I woke up and I wouldn't have to be in the fucking store. <laughs> I just wake up and be like, oh, I must have made those when I was really drunk last night. I love macadamia. Uh, I think it's really silly when people get mad about, like, simple things. I mean, we live in a super convenient world to the point where you can go and buy a microwavable vegan breakfast burrito, a 52-inch plasma screen, motor oil, and a foam door hammer all at the same place, and you don't even really have to come into contact with the person because they have self-checkout. And, uh, like, I saw a lady the other day that got really upset about the self-checkout. And she had scanned, like, 20 of her things, and she gets, like, 21st thing, and it just isn't scanning correctly. And she gets so livid, it's like, you know, you can tell visibly upset about it. And the thing is, it was clear that she was just doing it wrong, because this is how you do self-checkout. You scan your taco season, and you put it in the bag. You scan your sour cream, and you put it in the bag. You take your 10 pounds of meat, you don't scan it, you put it in the bag before the weight sensor goes off and you put it in your shopping cart because they're letting you scan things yourself. Why the fuck would you scan everything? <laughs> I steal everything from Walmart. Yes. I, mean, yes. I, I justify it because Walmart's like a big evil corporation and they send jobs overseas and they're putting Ma and Paul general stores out of business, but it's really just because I'm poor and I'm a thief. <laughs> Seriously, I'll get $80 worth of groceries for like 20 bucks, and then I'll go home, my roommate's watching a documentary about uh, super couponers, and this lady's super stoked because she just saved 50 cents off honey bunches of oats with almonds, and I just made off of honey a bunch of oats, almonds, and five porterhouse steaks. And uh, what I'm trying to say is I don't let the small things bother me, and by small things I mean the cost of steak. It's for me, it's free. <laughs> I have a really weird family, and I know uh, everybody says that, but I do. Uh, my grandma, her name is Oma, 
That's her first name. Uh, her name is Oma Moody. And uh, I don't, if you speak German, you know that Oma means in German, grandma, which means when she was born, her parents named her grandma. <laughs> Seemingly, extremely self-prophetic. Like, like, yep, she is. That's what she is. That's all I've known her as is grandma. <laughs> um, this little baby grandma. <laughs> um, my, the, the, I mean, like, they're weird to the extent where I have, a, I have an uncle who, who married a woman, and uh, they had a kid, my cousin, and then my uncle died. God rest his soul. And uh, then my married in aunt started hooking up with my other uncle, and uh, they got married also, making my cousin's new dad his step-uncle dad. Um, which a, a lot of people would be like, that's just redneck and gross and slightly incestuous. But it's not, they're just really good Christians because that's covered in Deuteronomy. This is Deuteronomy 25.7, the passage directly before the chop off her hands bit. I'm just going to paraphrase this for you. It says if a man dies and leaves a widow, um, he, his brother has to marry her. And if he doesn't, the widow has to go to him and say, hey, you have to marry me. And if he still doesn't want to, she has to get the town elders to come in and be like, hey, you have to marry her. And if he still doesn't want to, they all have to go to the village square where... Uh, where she goes up to him and takes off his sandal and spits in his face and slaps him with it. <laughs> this is the Bible, people. This is the word of God. Um, and then she has to say, and then she has to say, for now on your descendants shall be known as the descendants of the unsandaled. And I'm just gonna say right now, there are no unsandaled moodies because we are God-fearing people, damn it. And, uh, that's all the time I got, guys. Thanks a lot.